Hello and welcome to In The Hyperloop, my name is Blake. Today we're gonna to get started with Transpod and this awesome render from uh, Transpod of their Thai Hyperloop concept route um, going over the field and into the mountains and uh, the pylons go. The feasibility study in Thailand um, demonstrated um, an increase of GDP 4.7 um, for the entire country. It's just a really interesting study. If you've not already checked this study out, um, I would highly recommend it. Um, it goes into economic, environmental, and human benefits, um, especially as we all travel around. Um, saving hours per year is just really important, um, and doing it so sustainably is even better. So I just highly recommend you do it, um, or check this out. Um, they also have a transpodresearch.org site that goes into the subsystems of the pod and um, some of the powering capabilities of their pod. As we talked about it yesterday in a video, um, they have kind of two powering cables above and below the pod and then kind of four um, lifting glide, jet glide, uh, as they call it, um, uh, levitation system. So I'd highly recommend you check that out. Um, kind of going in the same vein of uh, companies that are around Hyperloop. Um, this one, Continuum Industries, is a spinoff of HyperEd and the Hi Edinburgh University um, Hyperloop pod competition team. Um, this is Continuum Industries. Um, they are optimizing transportation systems by op automating design and decision making. Um, a really cool um, uh, software that they have called the Digital Super Twin. Um, it's a digital model of transportation systems that provide understanding of the complex relationships. Um, and it enables decision makers uh, to put in different variables at different levels, um, from electrical subsystems to infrastructure to wider economic benefits, um, more than an asset monitoring and management tool. The Super Twin become, uh, comes before an asset to build and is live at every stage. Um, under this product, uh, we see another product. Rowdy is the first incarnation of the digital super twin um, and the first software produced and developed by Continuum. Um, Rowdy is an automated route and alignment planner for road, rail, and hyperloop. It combines geospatial data, including elevation and land use, and um, generates the most optimal design options. Um, the algorithm generates thousands of design options and allows engineers to explore a wide range of decisions. It takes minutes, not months, to modify transportation specifications. Um, it can also uh, get any transport project from inception to business case much faster. Rowdy increases confidence in the design thanks to data-centric approach. And um, thanks to built-in innovation, Rowdy enables small and nimble teams to punch above their weight to work on much larger projects. Rowdy automatically generates quantitative um, reports for my environmental um, impact assessment. So, um, socioeconomic data is plugged in, um, complex data analytics, powered by cloud, diverse team. Um, and if you want to talk to them, just drop them a line. Um, so we haven't really heard a lot of news lately. Um, just that they've secured seed investment. Um, but it'll be really fascinating to see um, if these hype, this Hyperloop uh, derivative company like Continuum Industries or like Eurotube that's building infrastructure are partnering together um, with these Hyperloop development centers. So <clears throat> changing gears um, to the SpaceX pod competition, Badger Loop released um, an update, a competition update. All nighters are becoming regular occurrences for the Badger Loop team, uh, but not in vain. Electrical team cleared multiple milestones today after preparing all night for navigation and sharing our state diagrams to advisors. Navigation um, and diagrams were a success, but physically running through them is yet to happen. This last goal is the focus for the evening and hopefully multiple runs through this tonight will bring success tomorrow. Reconfiguring the fit and lateral stability system is underway for the mechanical team. While some of the problems were solved last night, there's still another issue that needs to be checked in order to run the pod mechanically. 
Um, if you recall, we did not com completely get through the full pump down in the vacuum chamber last night because the low voltage batteries died, which happens all the time for these teams. Um, after purchasing a few more battery chargers and making modifications so the batteries can hold charge longer, we revisited the vacuum first thing in the morning and successfully proved that to SpaceX that our pod is safe to run in a vacuum environment. Now all that is left to do uh, before we are allowed to do an open air run without vacuum is to finish proving our pod is mechanically and electrically capable of running along the I-beam, which is the center guideway in the center of the tube. Various ups and downs throughout today brought us closer to a run in the tube than the team um, has ever been uh, in its four years of competing. Good job. Um, tomorrow is a crucial day for us, and we hope to bring good news. Um, regardless, we're proud of the team and engineering thus far, and we'll keep pushing regardless of the outcome tomorrow. As of writing, the entire testing crew is planning to work late into the night. We'll update how it goes, and there they are working above, around, and through the, the Hyperloop pod. Good job, Badger Loop. Thanks for the updates. Um, you beat EPFL's update, or sorry, uh, 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 Hyperloop UPV's update. So good job. Now let's just take a look at this video uh, added um, yesterday from EPFL Loop, who's currently like winning um, along with Swiss Pod. Swiss Loop. Hi, I'm uh, Marc Grossin. I'm part of the elect design team of the EPFL Loop team. And so my role is to manage all the electrical connection on the pod, which means I basically design the nervous system of the pod. When I enter to the, the testing lot, it's very impressive. You know, you are here and first thing you, you, you have in mind is like, we are here, it just, it starts now. It's, there is all this team and they are all unpacking the pod and you see all the different pod and then say, ah, oh, that was very clever. Or, oh, I like that, or, that's nice. And before coming here, uh, I was a little bit stressed and so on like, I am uh, good enough to do this. And when you discuss with other people, you just see that we are all the same. And this is very important to, to figure out we are all the same. We all have the same chances. We are all engineers and uh, we are all at a very high level and I'm not below the other people. I think that's a, that's a great uh, video blog testimonial. Um, it's easy to start stressing and doubting yourself, but discover how Mark, electrical engineer, electrical design team lead, um, overcame his fears when arriving at the first day of testing at SpaceX. This is a learning opportunity and um, don't stress teammates. Uh, um, you know, it's it's totally fine. This is just a learning opportunity. But then EPFL <laughs> Lou posted this um, last night, late into the night. Amazing news. Bella Lou, which is a mountain in Kranz, Montana, Switzerland, um, which is also a sponsor of their pod, managed to reach 158 kilometers an hour, which is around 98 um, miles per hour, in only 188 meters, which is around 900 uh, feet. Um, in the tube, which is over a mile, 5,280 feet long. In the open air hyperloop today, this was nowhere close to full power, which is kind of scary. <laughs> this is awesome. All of our past year hard work is finally paying off and we're excited to do even better in the upcoming days. But just for tonight, we'll allow ourselves one night to celebrate. So congratulations, EPFL Loop. I'm not aware of any other team um, putting their pod and going this fast, even before the competition. So a hearty congratulations late into the afternoon evening there um, yesterday. Really excited to see that. So now we're just looking at the other Hyperloop uh, teams according to the Hyperloop approvals. Um, kind of, uh, we're just gonna scroll across. So a lot of teams have done well with the safety, mechanical fit. Um, a lot of the teams have done pretty well. Swiss Loop and Tomb are doing well, and UW Hyperloop and Hyped. And then going into structural inspection batteries, um, pretty good um, across the board. Uh, battery inspection, um, again, uh, pretty good across the board. Um, and then it gets functional tests. So low voltage battery, which we heard about from Badger Loop. Um, you know, pretty good across the board, and we see they eventually uh, passed it, um, approval from SpaceX. So good job, Badger Loop. Um, now we're looking at vacuum tests, and of course they passed it, uh, Badger Loop. Um, and then crawling across the board, we see MIT doing well, um, Swiss Loop and Tomb doing well, 
and uh, UW Hyperloop uh, doing pretty well. So, and Avishkar, uh, so good job. And then um, going into navigation, which is optical usually, um, looking at the lights going by or little tiny um, stickers along the wall and bouncing a light off of those every so often to see how fast they're going, that's good. Um, so that's good. And then state diagram, transition tests. Again, not sure exactly. Loss of communication planned. Um, maybe it's just like if the, the pod can navigate <laughs> okay without communication. Um, so MIT, Swiss Loop, Tomb did well. So I think today's just going to be a super busy day for all of the teams getting these last series checks. Um, external subtract test. Um, EFPFL, of course, has passed. Um, so has Swiss Loop. Uh, Tomb is going pretty quickly. Um, and then finally, the open air Hyperloop test um, with you know the door open and just kind of sending it into the tube. Delft is doing well. Um, Swiss Loop, Tomb Hyperloop is doing well, EW. And um, finally, Hyperloop test. Badger Loop is getting fitted again. Um, so is Delft, it appears, but a little bit more far. Um, EPFL doing well. One Loop, Paradigm, Swiss Loop, Tomb, and uh, EW. So good job, everybody. Now we're just going to take a quick look at um, other Instagram stories that uh, groups have done. So we're just going to go back in time to the veteran hype Hyperloop teams versus the Cal Poly rookies. And the bike pump is working to inflate a pressure. Good job. Yeah, it, this is a learning experience. Don't worry about other teams. Um, it's 71 degrees. And they're cooking taquitos. Watch this to get a sense of the length of the Hyperloop tube for testing. Um, and there's the team working really hard on their, their pod. Queen's Hyperloop uh, is holding some batteries and who's looking for a hookup. And they've also managed to get ice cream outside their Airbnb. Good job. Um, the rice company that's sponsoring Hyperloop UPV that made an amazing sentimental commercial that rivals Hyperloop TT is sentimental commercials um, with a, a, a little girl getting a toy from her grandfather. Um, the equipment of Hyperloop UPT esta ya un cuarto de competición push the limit. Yeah, and then attention of Turin with the, I don't know what the Puebla is. So por, a por todas, um, let's go. And Hyperloop UPV, um, eight hours ago, uh, looking day five. I, I thought they had um, published the day five results already, but um, maybe not. And that link's not so good. Um, so we're just going back. Um, oh, day four. Swipe up to see day five. And there they are at some type of building. Not sure. Um, let's check out that post real quick. Um, oh, it's the sustainability building. So they're getting inspiration by other teams. And we're quickly going to just go into Eurotube. Um, Delft, uh, Atlas 2 is currently in the SpaceX vacuum tube, um, and 95 of 122 done. And let's just check out HyperEd, three days of testing. And uh, actually, let's go back to HyperEd and check out those photos. Three days left, we've been working hard tonight on software electronics to prepare for functional tests happening tomorrow. Everyone here is really excited as the day of the competition approach. We can't wait to show you the flying podsman in action. So working hard late at night. And um, yeah, 
That's about it. We've heard some teams, you know, like Hyperloop UPV not wanting to transport their pod back and forth because it wastes crucial time. Um, so HyperEd doing well. And finally, uh, kind of our, our moment of Zen, we're just gonna go to uh, the, <laughs> the Transpod page again um, and look at that pretty photo of Thailand um, with the Hyperloop tube. So um, we're gonna be in uh, LA tomorrow and checking out the testing area um, later in the afternoon and then we'll be there early on Sunday um, ready to interview and look forward to um, seeing the results, good or bad, and it's just a learning experience, so don't fret about things. Um, but stay in the loop and uh, looking forward to this weekend.